Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in and joining us. Amen. Pastors Aaron and Amanda Crabb, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> um, we welcome you and thank you uh, for giving us an opportunity to speak into your lives today. Absolutely. Yesterday was good. It was a little bit different than... It was very different. Kind of um, went into some different things, but... Yeah. Well, uh, probably some of the arguments uh, in ministry right. that, that we've seen. And, um, you know, listen, I, and I said, if if uh, you have ever gotten that wound from a pastor, I'm not talking about abusive right, stuff. Right. I'm talking about a word. Yeah, a word wound. A word wound. I'm yeah. not talking about crazy stuff. If there's crazy stuff going on, well, pack here's up, the truth. Let, let's just say this <laughs> and we can move on. To, but the whole phrase of sticks and stones may break my bones. But words will never hurt me. Is a lie. It is a lie. So words do wound. Absolutely. And they limit us from what God has for us. Well, here's the deal, power of life. And death's in our tongue. And death are in our tongue. And so we have the have power uh, and people, sometimes we allow those words to get in. And, and I told somebody this week who, you know, has a powerful testimony and shared it and come against some pretty heavy religious stuff. Mm -hmm. The enemy loves nothing more than try to intimidate somebody right. who has a newfound confidence in That's God. That's it. That's it. 100%. And I'm talking about this testimony has been tried. It's been true. It's not like you know, moped around and then one day woke up and decided, you know, he he was going to preach the gospel. I'm talking about it's been tried and been mm -hmm. through the pressure and been tested and kind of came out and shared the testimony and of course got a pushback. And, you know, for a second, it's just, it's discouraging. And the truth is I'm like, you know what? No, 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 no. We're going to expect impact right. and we cannot allow, allow other, another person's uh, viewpoint right. to detour what That's we right. know is and, true. And the truth is, yes, there was times where uh, that was an uh, obstacle, an issue maybe. Yeah. But, you know, as you grow in the Lord, those things, you just, you know, you, you begin to go, hey, I, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I think it's and, part of the maturity. Yeah, and I think about. with us being in, in this position that God has allowed us to be in where there's uh, a capacity of influence, we should always be those who are empowering those who God has given us the honor to Amen. influence. It is an honor. You know, because it, He can take it away just as much, just as, as sure as, as He gives it. it. Yeah. So that's, that's, I think we, you learn lessons from the processes of, of your life so that God can use, uh, can there's a greater potential in what He invests in you yeah. in that, when you're learning through the process. Yep. And I think that's what we are saying and, and, and what we've experienced. Clearly Would you agree? he felt the need to go and explain that to you just in case you got mad No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I sense it. So then let's talk about the prayer of repentance. So let's talk about David in uh, Psalms 51, and this is one of my absolute favorites. Um, I could read this whole chapter. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Mm. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward mm. parts and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. wisdom. Mm. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and mm. I shall be white, whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken mm. may rejoice. <laughs> Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast 
spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. And I love this. Restore to me the joy of your salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. So let's just stop right there. Yeah. First, it was a cry out to God acknowledging possibly where out of a wrong spirit he did some things. Right, have mercy on me. Have mercy, me. purge me. Let me see because you desire truth in the inward, inward parts. parts of me. The Lord desires truth in the inward things of our being. Amen. Wash me, cleanse me. And in all of this, take everything else so I do not take your presence from me. And then this right here, restore to me the joy of your salvation. If you do not have joy in being a Christian, if you don't have joy in serving the Lord, if you don't have joy in the ministry, you cannot mm. uh, lead anybody else to salvation. And that's the truth. That's what we were talking about yesterday. So Having to overcome and, and just push it aside because you cannot fully operate in what got you Listen, market are not leading anybody to Jesus when you are so full of bitterness and depression right. and of a sad, uh, broken place, right, truthfully. Right, right. He's saying, restore, look, my these bones in brokenness are not rejoicing. Somehow piece them back together and let me rejoice. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Let me be happy to just know you again. Right, right to hear your voice again. Let me just be happy. Don't let me try to fix everything else. Restore the joy and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then, say then. Then. I will teach sinners your way. We have, we cannot be teaching anybody anything right. until we have first gone through this process that David has just done. Well, and, and, and we keep, you know, we go back to the, the reality is it's in his presence that his fullness is found. That's right. And that's what he says here, created me a, a, a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a, a, a steadfast right spirit. spirit, a rightful spirit within me. Uh, the only way that that's even obtainable is to be, in, to be near him, to be, to near be close him. to him. The fullness is in the closeness. Ooh. Then I will teach transgressors your way and, and sinners, sinners shall, shall be, be converted, converted to you. To you. Yep. And you know, a lot of people say you catch more flies with honey and that's not saying that everything is perfect. It's saying that even in persecution, in trial, in perilous times, in uh, words being spoken to you and, and every turn telling you what you're not called to do, uh, be joyful in right, affliction. Right, right, right. Rejoice in Rejoice. it. Rejoice. Because it's in those moments that sinners are converted. Right, right. That's it. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips. There we go. Talking about our mouth praising the Lord or cursing. Mm -hmm. And my mouth shall show forth your, your praise. praise for you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are, are a, broken a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. So he's saying, just cleanse me, God. Right. Listen, if I went and laid down the sacrifice of an animal, that's not what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. You want me to be broken for the things of your presence, the thought of being without you. I'm not broken and turning into bitterness. I'm broken and putting my life in your hands. Right. 
Uh, Revelation 411, I, I preached this sermon a, a while back. It's been, gosh, it's been a while back. St the one coming up higher, remember mm -hmm. that one? <laughs> Revelation 4. And, and after these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up come here. Up. And I will show you things which you must, which must take place after this, and if you read in Revelation 4, uh, you, will, you will see it talking about all of the things that's around His throne, in His presence, the, the majestic ways of Him, the fullness mm -hmm. of who He is, and it talks about the rainbow. Four creatures. Uh, it talks about uh, the seven spirits of God, and those seven spirits are His wisdom, His counsel, His knowledge, the Spirit of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, His might, and His understanding. Verse 5 says, from this throne proceeded lightning, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And this is the activation of God. This mm -hmm. is the fullness of His Holy Spirit. Uh, but we can only understand the fullness of His Holy Spirit as we are dwelling with Him, as we're communing with Shh. Him, as we're in relationship with Him. And, and David uh, understands that it's in that broken place that he... Uh, acts, act, uh, he activates and opens up that, that door. He's calling us up higher with, with the heavenly sound mm -hmm. to a higher place, a higher dimension, uh, but it's only uh, in that broken state, that, that place of humility, of being broken before the Lord, that He can, he can fill, uh, fill us with the fullness of who He is. Talking about His strength, His honor, His riches, His wisdom, His glory and His blessings. He wants us to walk in all of that. Yes, He does. And that's then how we become His vessels to lead others into what we've obtained through relationship, through that closeness. Now they're just following the pattern as we follow the pattern of who He is. Isaiah uh, 11 says, um, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, call and and a, and a branch, uh, call grow out of his shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. These seven are the completion of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. The Holy Spirit is the fullness. That's what this, this is saying, the seven. If you look in the rainbow, now I'm not talking about the rainbow that you that see today. That the world has perverted. That the right. world has perverted. It has the number of man colors. There's six colors. But this rainbow has seven, seven colors, colors in it because seven is the number of God. It's That's the number right. of His perfective way that He desires for you to walk in, for you to be. He wants you to be established in the fullness of who He is and His wisdom and His counsel and His knowledge and the spirit of the Lord and the fear of the Lord, His might and His understanding. And for our God is a consuming fire. And so when we're walking in this way, uh, we, we can see that, that his, his fire is purging us, but also it's activating us at the same mm. time. So it's, it's David, uh, understood, I believe David understood the ways of the Lord. Sure. And he knew how to get the, the fullness of who he was. Uh, he knew always to, to be broken uh, and to inquire. He always knew how to inquire of the Lord. And so I believe God's calling us up to a, a greater dimension, a greater place. And he's, you know, he, he, there's a fullness that we have uh, in these seven spirits, if you will, of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of God that he desires us to operate and to, to walk in. Well, there's Psalms 51 mm -hmm. is David's heart cry to the Lord right after Nathan the prophet came to him mm. um, and basically told him, you know, you've just really messed up. And um, here David is the king. And Nathan the prophet came and, and gave him a word. And this right after David's sin with Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. And we know the story, like Bathsheba gets pregnant. He tries to manipulate it and brings Uriah in from the battle, convinces him, hey, go sleep with your wife. Right. He's like, I can't. Right. And um, then, then he is sent, I believe his name is Uriah, is sent to the front line of battle. 
And so David's heart here, I mean, he's got blood shed on his hands. He has just committed adultery uh, and probably, you know, is basically just being told you, you will forfeit uh, being able to rebuild the temple. Wow. You, you will have no hand in it. Right, right. You might have the vision, your hand will not be put to right, it. Right, right. And so this broken place, okay, God, you, wow. My, here's what we need to know today. Sin has consequences. Yes, yes, it does. Sin has consequences. And you said that on Sunday, and it's so true. Sin has consequences. Right. And I don't know if you have ever sinned and live with that, that moment of, oh, and so instead of David getting prideful and going, well, I'm the king here and I can do whatever I want. Right. He was like, wow, I have really messed up. Sure, there's consequences me, to God. all sin. There was 70,000 men that died <laughs> because he chose to number the men. God says, watch this, I'll take away what, what's most important to you so that you can see what should be most important right. to, well, to you. Right, well, and that's the thing. You know. So missing the opportunity to um, be able to build the temple, and, and we know God restored because Bathsheba and David went on to um, have Solomon, right, who built the temple for God, right, and so there his, David's lineage, and we said that he had a lineage, but. Even there were limitations in David's he used life. That imperfection, he, even the imperfection, yeah. So that to me is a very powerful Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Knowing, knowing the power of God is truly knowing the power of repentance and humbling ourselves before the Lord, asking Him to create in us a clean heart. You know, we were talking about this uh, today that Paul, you know, he there was one portion of scripture where he says, I, I, I'm doing the things that I hate to do in his flesh, you know, and all that. And so many can take that as it's, uh, here's my okay to, to sin. Okay to here's sin. my okay to do what I want to do. And so we've lived in this such air of greasy grace, but there's Ooh. also that says, um, that talks about walking in the spirit so you will not fulfill the lust of the That's flesh. Right. If we walk in the fullness of who God is, That's right. his strength, his wisdom, his counsel, all of those things that was just listed. <clears throat> That's why James says he wants us perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And here's the deal. Yes, you're going to mess up. David messed up. Most people that God used made a mess of things. <laughs> yes. And God, because of brokenness and humility and that, that type of mm -hmm. positioning, humbling ourselves as what we've been just declaring over this season, God redeems, restores, He renews. And But we have a choice. We mm. have a choice in that moment of are we going to walk by way of the Spirit? Right. Or are we going are to we fulfill going to the fulfill lust our... of our flesh? Because in the moment, you know, fulfilling the lust of our flesh sounds like a wonderful thing. And it might be pleasurable for just, for just a minute. A minute. Uh, but at the end of it is death. And I feel like this was David's moment of, because I, you know, maybe, maybe you've never sinned. Maybe you have never done something that horrific and you can't even imagine why somebody would do that and how God would even use somebody after that. Right. Um, and here's the first thing to say to that. Praise God, we are not God. Right. He is a uh, very merciful and he's forgiving, but I believe that the long lineage, uh, clearly this was an avenue that David did not inquire of the Lord. He, right. he inquired about going up to battle. He inquired about all of these things, but he saw Bathsheba uh, taking a bath right. and the lust of his flesh got a hold of him. And, and, you know, bottom line, and it happened in, you know, the spring of the year and, um, you know, here we are, we're in a, a very strange season, all of us that we've never been in before. And, um, you know, where 
we're in a battle and it's easy to allow our flesh to speak when, you know, there's other things around us going on and even in leadership and we have to be very cautious, but I'm telling, because I'm telling you in this Psalms 51, thank God that David had the fortitude to go, whoo, I know, I know what you're requiring right now. Mm -hmm. And he humbled himself and he repented and uh, therefore he, the pride did not take him out. Right, right. Because sin will either do one of two things because there are consequences. You will e either get prideful and uh, continue in it right. or you will or humble yourself broken. Yeah. and be broken. That's and the difference in lies between him and Saul. Saul mm -hmm. chose to be prideful and to lean into his own ways. But, um, you know, here's the thing. When God starts a thing, uh, we can be confident in the very thing that thing he's begun, he will finish he it. He will finish. You know, he will finish it. However he sees fit to do it, he will finish it. And David always stayed in that positioning of surrender, always. You can see that. And so David obviously was a handsome man and he obviously had many wives, but I always find it interesting that on his deathbed, I don't know why we're talking about David a lot this week, but we are. Mm -hmm. On his deathbed, they they said, "Let's, you know, let's. How will we know whether he's really sick and really like near death or right. not?" They sent a virgin in, and if he was not aroused and did not perform, they knew he was dead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. Yeah, yeah. That's the truth. And it was at that moment they were like, oh, he is dead. Right. There's nothing left. Uh, but what was left was the word and the passing of the torch to his son. Sure. Uh, in that moment. That's right. what he called for, for yeah. Solomon to yeah. pass it. <laughs> what? That's so funny, man. But it's, a, cool. you know, every one of us have those things. And, and that was David's hindrance. Yeah, it, was it was his, his weak, hindrance. It was his weakness. You know, his and, blessing was his curse, I guess. Right. Well, and as you were talking about, you know, Paul and doing, you know, I'm doing what I what I know not to do, and and you know, I, whatever that was in Paul's life, there's a lot of open ended for that. You know, Paul Paul was a man, a powerful man of God. Mm -hmm. We we've talked about him and and the work that he did for the ministry. And um, he was still a man. Right. And he continually submitted mm -hmm. his life under the hand of God. Right, right. Well, and, and again, Paul was one of those people of, of perspective and he, he saw where there was the weighing of, of the two. You know, there was, there was always gonna be one pulling on the other, you know, the spirit. And so all through scripture, we can see uh, such as Philippians 4.4. 4. He tells us what we need to do mm -hmm. to get into that, that mindset. David was the same way. How am I going to, how am I going to get into uh, the mindset of overcoming? I'm right. going to praise. I'm going to, you know, uh, Paul said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, prayer and supplication. And then he goes on to say, brother, uh, whatever things are, just whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatever things have good report. This is what you think on to get your self out of your flesh, out of your situation, out of your circumstance. And it is that tug of war of the spirit and the flesh. And you have to fight. It's a, it's a battle within, within us. Yeah. It's a battle within us. And we choose which side wins, Ain't truthfully. That the truth. We choose what we're going to feed because what, what, feed, what we feed is, is what we become, Ooh. you know. And you know what's interesting about David here, David, um, you know, literally they put virgins in his tent to see if he was still alive or not. Right, right. And then you have Paul mm -hmm. who said it's, it's actually not good to to even touch a woman, right. like <laughs> you, you got complete opposite ends of the spectrum. One had many wives and obviously had issues. And then this one comes to the complete opposite end. And he's yeah. like, you know what this, I would say, don't even marry, <laughs> like don't just yeah. stay away from it. Don't even marry. And I'm a, because yesterday we were talking about Paul and Timothy's, you know, Paul talking to Timothy about women, you know, not they, they want to, drive a stake in the ground about that scripture, but, right. but they married. Right, <laughs> yeah. 
Paul's suggestion in that too was, you know, don't even marry. And then he said, but if you're going to, if you're going to do it, if you're going to have that tendency, it's better to marry right, that's right. than to burn. Yeah, that's what Grandma used to tell me <laughs> all the time. How many parents said that? Better Go ahead to and marry your hands. than to it's burn. Better to marry than to burn. And that's not like burn in hell. It means burn <laughs> with the passion that you have within yeah. you. It's better, I guess, to marry and release those passions you yeah. know, for a yeah. wife. But he actually said, hey, it's actually better marriage could be a distraction is what Paul felt. Right. Paul felt like marriage was a distraction to the call of God on his life. Right. Yeah. And here's the thing. Everybody, doesn't matter who it is on planet Earth, doesn't matter how spiritual we are, we all have those days of weakness. We mm. all have those off days. What's your weakness? Off weeks. What's your off day? What's my <laughs> off day? Probably Mexi Mexican food. Mexican food, that don't count. <laughs> sweets, yeah. that's uh, potato Some chips. Some sweets, probably. Um, I don't know. What is, I mean, you, you, you live with yeah, me. Yeah, you don't really. You know. You re I mean, we really don't. And probably because over the years we have learned to safeguard. Right. Truthfully. But but there's there's maybe those days where you're not as passionate or zealous as as you are in days before, mm. or, you know, everybody has an off day, off week, off, whatever. And, and they're not, and they're not on their game is what the term a lot of people would say. And you, that's the moment you choose. Okay. Right. Do I just quit because I'm having an off day and off week, day. off whatever, or do I persevere? Do, am I still committed? Wow. Am I still committed when it's, when it's not exactly uh, what I feel that, that it sh should be, or it's not exactly what it normally is, or my relationship, you know, with Christ is, wow. is the example of our relationship. Yes, sir. You know, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. Um, when days are going good, when days aren't going so well. Yeah. You know, it's it's that commitment and that diligence. It's that that keeps us the choice. That keeps it, and it's a choice. It is a choice. It's that. Okay, I got to speak to my spirit man. I got to encourage my spirit man. It's that. It's Stir again. It's that David of, of encouraging myself in the Lord. Sometimes I'm all by myself in this, and you know, and I need to do something myself for that affliction, for that pain, whatever yeah. it is, um, to pull myself out of out of whatever the funk <laughs> and the mess. You ever been in a funk? Well, never. <laughs> And so ultimately, let's all tell the truth. We all have bad days. Right. We all have those moments of getting frustrated and, you know, going, well, I don't, whatever, whatever. Um, you know, why do, why do I even try? Why this? Why that? Just before you allow yourself to cross over into that. Um, I, 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 I have said before, mm -hmm. when, when they brought those the virgin in to David when he was literally on his last leg of life. Um, that was people who knew David's flesh. Right. Who, who knew, and listen, you gotta be careful. People will always try to speak to your flesh. Right. And that, in that moment, they were trying to feed a fleshly side of David. Mm on his deathbed when really the greatest thing that David did on his deathbed was bring Solomon to me. Right. And I'm gonna speak a blessing and instruct him on what he's supposed What's to, to do. What's to do next. What he's to do next. And uh, so we gotta be cautious because there are people, not they don't mean to, but like, hey, Pastor Aaron, I know, listen, you love you some hot chicken, let's go. Let's right, go. yeah. Speaking to a, a fleshly thing when God's maybe called him to fast today. Right. And while they don't mean to, sometimes people have a better uh, tendency to make connection with your flesh mm. over your spirit. Mm. But Good. you think about <laughs> what he chose in that moment was the right choice. Was the right choice. And where he maybe had messed it up before and messed up his destiny, mm. he wasn't about to allow it to the next continued. generation to be dis disrupted. Wow. And so he, he chose, maybe it was more of a, a, a choice of, you know, his flesh won the first time. Mm. But at this moment, he knew that, that destiny nope, there was, something greater. was too great for him to, for it to be you, distorted Father. again Thank by you, the Father. enemy. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Well, we probably ran over time again today. 
because we get in the word and we get bouncing back and forth. And I pray that you're being encouraged yes, today. Amen. I pray that, listen, here's the beautiful thing about God's genuine grace. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve it. There is nothing that we could do right. to receive it. Right. Th that's the truth. Right. It's um, unmerited favor. Right. It is the blessing that we could never obtain on our own merit. Right. So here's the truth. If you've messed up, you might have been in a sinful state last night. Mm. Maybe this morning. Maybe you're still in it. Right. Uh, maybe there have been some conscious decisions uh, that you made willingly knowing, boy, this is not going to end well. Today's a new day and a fresh start is right here for you. And you have the opportunity to course correct wow. and not miss out on what God would do through you and leading a next generation people to truly building the temple of God. Yes. And so I just encourage you for just a moment, let's pray that prayer yes, of repentance that David did in Psalms 51. I encourage you to go read it today. Yes. Break it down, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Search me, O God, and know me. Uh, for you desire truth in the inward, inward parts. parts of me, which means the parts that are hidden, hidden. that I can't even see, but you see you it, God. See it. Bring it before me mm. so I can speak to it yeah. and cause it to be removed That's and plead good. the blood over it. There's grace for you today, but just like David refused to go back mm -hmm, to it mm -hmm. after he had already messed up, he knew the hell that he lived in this moment. Have you ever sinned and been so guilt ridden that it feels like death? Mm. That you would rather die than face the truth of your sin? Right, right. Guess what? The best way that you can die is kill that flesh right here right. and be crucified with Christ and go under the blood of Jesus and say, Father, I've sinned. Right. Forgive me. Right. Forgive me. Wash me. Make me white as snow today. Right. Because he will do it. And then here's the beautiful thing. He wants you to be empowered to go. Mm -hmm. But he cannot afford that unclean place to be empowered. But he said, Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Of salvation. Mm. That I may lead sinners to know you. And so that's such a powerful statement, and I know we can't get into that, but restore the joy of my salvation. Yes, so many have lost that. They've lost joy and right so now. So if you've lost that, you have no zeal, you have no passion. No passion to tell anybody. You know, and passion will push you into purpose. Look at Hannah. It was the passion of what she did not, what she had didn't, she wasn't aware that she was missing anything. That's right. But when she became aware, she, she became, became aware. passionate about wow. what she wanted to obtain. And so maybe there have been many opportunities to where you should have walked in joy and you walked in bitterness and guilt and condemnation and, and just flat out being mad at the world when in all reality you were probably mad at yourself mm. because sin brought on all of this stuff. Right. Listen, there's a new chance, a new yes. opportunity, and uh, um, be restored today. Amen. Uh, restoring hope is not just a title of a church. Right. It literally it's a mandate it's from a the mandate Lord. mandate from the Lord. Yes. That we would go and restore hope. And part of restoring hope is telling you truth that we can look inwardly with the lens of the Holy Spirit and be fresh and be new under His covenant. Yes. In his blood. And his patterns speak. Jesus said, what you see in me, what I do, he said, you do. You do it. Paul said the same thing. Yes. But what's, Imitate me. What's awesome is like, you know, Paul had ups and downs. He had, you know, he was flesh. And so we learn from Paul that when we trip, and David, when he tripped, he, we learn from the patterns of he didn't stay there. Follow on the Lord. He, he got up. Righteous fall seven times. He got up. But they get back up. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty that I, I, I believe, um, oh, Winston Churchill said something to the, to the effect of, you know, failure is not, uh, you, the, you know, the, the defining moment, successes are actually built on many failures. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear me? Success is built on many failures, which 
truly, as long as the if failure... you're successful in ministry, it's not because you've not had failures. We, this church is still standing almost six years later, not because we haven't had bad days, mm. but it's because when we had a bad day or someone came and harmed us with their words or accusations and it walked right in our house, it's because we made the choice to get back up again. Wow. Successes are built as long as you don't many failures. allow your failure to become your fatality. You have, still have a future. You have a future and you, hope. You know, and you have a hope and a future. When you allow your failure to fuel your future, <laughs> rather than to be your fatality. Come on. You know, there's there's when you allow your failure to make you better. Yeah. Rather than bitter. Come on. That's it right there and, in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I was even saying in yesterday's program about the things that have been said to me personally. I could have taken those things and my flesh wanted to take those things and sit in it. Mm -hmm. But the man of God who is the head of my life mm -hmm. here on this earth would not let me sit in it. He was not, and thank God for, you know, God knew to put me with somebody who was not going to let me set in what appeared to be failure mm. because it would have been destruction. Right, right. Don't allow your fa failure to be fatal. That's a word for you today. Go tweet that. Yeah, Do yeah. not allow your failure to become your failure. Fatality. Yeah, yeah. We love you. Mm -hmm. I pray that you would read Psalms 51, read it a hundred times today, and that it would become life to you. That if you need to repent, repent. Know that there's grace for you. Mm -hmm. But the, the way that we keep moving on is to make daily choices to get back up after a failure. So good. Amen. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>